The hunt for eternal life has been a perennial search throughout human history. The industry of self-preservation has grown into a multi-billion dollar niche, with technology today as calculated, safe, and guaranteed as it has ever been. However, in 1915, Serge Voronoff began his ultimately successful quest to become a millionaire off procedures that were neither calculated, safe, nor guaranteed. His premise? Transplant the testicles of monkeys into humans to increase virality, mental faculties, longevity, and essentially any medical claim one could conceive. Despite the absurdity of the procedure's premise, they were expensive and extremely popular. As the popularity of Voronoff and his procedures grew, an African reserve began construction to house the monkeys for use in testicular transplants, and Voronoff was introduced as a speaker at the Congress of Surgeons in London. Eerily sticking to the parallels of his modern-day mad scientist persona, by 1925, Voronoff had built himself a massive castle in Grimaldi, Italy, complete with a monkey enclosure, surgery room, and a former circus employee to care for the monkeys. Some other perverse ventures pursued by Voronoff included transplanting the testicles of death row inmates, a practice which Voronoff feared could lead to his patients adopting the murderous tendencies of their donors. He also attempted to transplant a human ovary into a monkey, and then impregnate the monkey with human sperm, neither of which were successful operations. By 1930, Voronoff ceased performing the procedures, citing the need for further perfection of the surgery, which to this point had already been performed over 2,000 times by he and his understudies. By this time, Voronoff had become the laughing stock of the scientific community, with patients claiming absurdly that they were adopting, quote, primate-like behavior as a result of the surgery, and the science behind his procedures showing to be flimsy at best. And although merit had always been given to Voronoff for his theories that the testicles produced some kind of healing serum, by 1935, testosterone had been discovered as a hormone, and Voronoff's guesswork was no longer shielded by the ambiguity of his area of interest. Having fled to the United States at the beginning of World War II, then moving back to France to work as a regular surgeon, by the time he returned to his castle, it had been bombed to shatters. Voronoff died a very wealthy man, but passed before he was able to rebuild his massive home, his credibility, or have the procedure which made him famous performed on himself. Though there is little evidence to suggest that Serge Voronoff had any reason to believe this to be the case, he built his fortune and fame off dangerous, ascientific guesswork. It is very unlikely that he ever helped anyone with his quest for eternal youth, and struck gold at a time in a period in medicine which favored bold claims and guesswork, rather than proven results and thorough understanding. Like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.